Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights and Entertainment. This is episode 143, How Not to Cancel Disney. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my rested and rejuvenated co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, dear? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing much better. So we're back with our first show after quite a long spring break. <laughs> right. Uh, that was unintentional. Right. Um, we had a couple of illnesses. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a spring break in there somewhere. Yep, and we we're did. Four weeks later, three weeks later. I don't think it was that long. It I only think weeks. it was two. Well, the week that she was sick, we didn't do it. Then I was sick the following week and the next week. All right, and then maybe it we was didn't three. Do it, then we didn't do it the week after that. So it had to have been at least four weeks. I didn't think it was that long. Yeah. Right. Time flies when you're having fun. Woo! When you're sick, apparently. <laughs> well, yeah, you you were pretty sick. But, you know, it was just a really bad cold, and unfortunately, you don't handle those well. No, I'm a, I'm a big baby when it comes to that. Yeah. Unfortunately, I also missed Fan Expo, which really kind of yeah, disappointed. Yeah, that, that was and, – and the thing was, you kind of were feeling – a little bit better by then. I was. I started but, the better men thing. Yeah. But I think it would have been too much walking. You would have. Had you I know, pushed it, I probably would have felt terrible. Afterwards. Right, and then you would have been out sick because you actually missed work, which you normally yeah don't. So it's, it's rare. yeah. But anyway, we're back. Uh, we're going to get back into the swing of things. We actually had had prepped the show. Uh, before the hiatus and kind of had to go through and throw out the articles. Yeah, because it got stale. Well, not only did things get stale, but so much had changed. Well, you the, know, the one, one article, yes, the had one evolved so had, much. Right. It was kind of the start of everything. Yeah. And now it's progressed so much more because, of course, every day, yeah. you know, and then. Well, the, and the good thing <clears> about <throat> being off for four weeks is we don't have to talk about Will Smith anymore. So. Right. Because he's kind of like, eh. Yeah, it's, that's yesterday's news. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> yeah. so this week in our Disney Detective, we will learn how not to cancel Disney. And then in our entertainment news, we'll have a disappointing update in the Walking Dead universe. Uh, and then in our insightful picks, we'll talk about the Halo series. Uh, so we'll get back in with a fairly easy show. We're not too, too demanding at this point in time. Well, thank you. That's so nice of you. That's, that's just trying to keep the pacing and get us back in into our rhythm here, you know? There you go. Before we do get into all that stuff, I would want to encourage our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights and Entertainment, Video and audio versions of the podcast can be found listed as Insights into Things. And we can be found anywhere you can get a podcast, Google, Apple, Spotify, etc., etc. I would also encourage you to write in, give us your feedback, tell us how you're doing. <laughs> tell us how we're doing, too, but we'd love to know how you're doing. Uh, I was feeling really good today. <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> uh, give us your suggestions <sighs> for local uh, conventions that we can plug for you and so forth. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. Uh, we're on Twitter at insights underscore things. We also do stream on Twitter now. So all of our live streams, thanks to our reflector service, restream.io, go out on our uh, Twitter feed now. So we're live now on Twitter, actually. Wow, we're high tech, man. We are. Uh, we're also on Facebook at facebook.com slash podcast. You can find us on Instagram at Instagram.com slash Insights Into Things. And as always, you can find all these and much more on our official website at InsightsIntoThings.com. Are we ready? Sure. All right. So 
So previously on this podcast, we discussed the controversy Bob Chappick, or Bob the Lesser as I like to call him, <laughs> and Disney faced over their initial response to the Don't Say Gay Bill, Florida's HB 1557. After revising their stance, Chappick and Disney took a much more liberal approach in their support <clears throat> of their staff who demanded action. That stance ran them afoul of the state's Republican governor, Ron DeSantis, to whom Disney actually contributed some $50,000 to his election campaign. Full disclosure. Hmm. DeSantis, in what can be best described as a political stunt, decided he was going to go after Disney for daring to exercise their free speech. Despite having declared on multiple occasions that he's an advocate of free speech, apparently he only means when it's speech that agrees with him, and which seems to be a disturbing trend these days. In what amounts to an abuse of power, DeSantis pushed a bill through the state legislature that would revoke the special self-governing district status that Disney has enjoyed since 1967, having passed both branches of the legislature in what was a remarkably rapid process, especially for government, DeSantis signed the bill into law on April 22nd. So it's important to understand what the special district status of Reedy Creek Improvement District is and why it was enacted. So the Reedy Creek Improvement District is the governing jur jurisdiction and special taxing district for the land of Walt Disney World Resort. The district encompasses approximately 25,000 acres or just under 40 square miles in both Orange and Osceola counties, servicing 19 landowners, including Walt Disney Company. It acts with the same authority and responsibility as a county government. It includes the cities of, Buena, uh, of uh, Bay Lake and Lake Buena Vista and uh, and in unincorporated. Thank you. And unincorporated RCID land. Uh, the district was created in 1967 after the Florida government passed the Reedy Creek Improvement Act. The district has the authority of a government of a governmental body, but is not subject to the constraints of a governmental body. So the district is responsible to oversee land use and environmental protections within the district and provide essential public services such as fire protection, emergency medical services, potable water production, treatment, storage, pumping and distribution, reclaiming land uh, water distribution, chilled and hot water services, wastewater services, drainage and flood control, electrical power generation and distribution, and solid waste and recyclable collection and disposal and operate and maintain all public roadways and bridges. It funds its operations, services, and capital improvements by assessing taxes and fees to the district's landowners and leases, and by uh, issuing ad valorum and utility revenue bonds. So in order to do away with the special district, the local counties would have to assume all the services that are now provided by Reedy Creek, including all debt services as well. This is where it becomes blatantly clear that the powers that be in the governor's office neglected to actually think this process through. Reedy Creek Improvement District says that Florida's move to dissolve the district next year is not legal unless the state pays Reedy Creek extensive debts, which currently amount to about a billion dollars in outstanding bond debt. The 1967 law that formed the district states that Florida, quote, will not in any way impair the rights or remedies of the holders until all such bonds together with interest thereon and all costs and expenses in connection with any act or proceeding by or on behalf of such holders are fully met and discharged. Apparently the governor neglected to read the original law before deciding to make up a new law. So what's the bottom line for Florida residents? Reedy Creek has an annual budget of about $355 million. It carries, as we mentioned, a $977 million in debt. 
So both of these burdens would then transfer to residents of these two Florida counties affected. Currently, the district operates at about $5 million to $10 million in a loss each year, but it is offset by subsidies provided by Disney. We can safely assume Disney won't be subsidizing that uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that deficit any further, uh, so that's an additional burden on the taxpayers. There's the question of existing expansion plans, uh, including a melt, um, blah, blah, blah. wow, multi million. You added too many, <laughs> too many words today. Um, so the question then goes about the expansion, which includes a multi million dollar solar power project that could be placed on hold indefinitely. Other concerns is that the district's firefighters union, where the union represents nearly half of the 400 district employees, they are looking for reassurance that members won't lose their jobs or their lifetime benefits in this transition. Conservative estimates indicate that Orange County residents could see a 20 to 25 percent increase in their property taxes. So it seems the knee-jerk, vindictive legislation from DeSantis to get back at political uh, dis dissenters Disney was poorly thought out with little actual planning for a transition. The new law dissolving the special districts was only two pages long. It avoids any discussion of details on how to unwind the existing deal. It fails to lay out any next steps in the process. And it makes no mention of how financing the process, the infrastructure burden, or the debt management will be handed, handled and who is responsible for it. It's almost as poorly written as the original Don't Say Gay bill that started this whole thing. The bill that was described as value and unspecific and likely to insult the threat of a parental lawsuit will likely lead to discrimination against the LGBTQ students. It would seem writing a comprehensive and cohesive, meaningful law isn't something that the Florida Republicans are concerned with. Their priority is ramming through anything it ramming through anything into law that supports their narrow minded conservative viewpoints, then sorting out the details after the damage is done. Now, it's also worth noting that Ron DeSantis is up for re-election this year, conveniently enough. In his last election, he won office by a slim margin of about 38,000 votes. Now, with the unprecedented tax increases he's forcing on Florida residents, the controversial bills he supported that rob people of their rights, and the fact that he's now attacked the single largest employer in the state who happens to employ over 75,000 residents, twice the margin of victory in his last election, it's hard to imagine how this will turn out well for DeSantis. He's made it clear that he had presidential aspirations, which might be his only course of action if he's kicked out of office after this term. However, it's also worth noting that the presumptive 2024 Republican candidate for president, Donald Trump, has indicated his disapproval of DeSantis' presidential ambitions since they clashed with his own. Who knows, maybe there's a greeter position at the local Walmart <laughs> in DeSantis' future. So this is this is a mess. An absolute oh, absolutely. mess. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and it's a clear it's a clear case of political power run amok. Mm -hmm. Amok, 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 amok. The Republicans want to tell you that we're for free speech and we hate cancel culture. So in order to get back at Disney for exercising their free speech, they're trying to cancel Disney. Mm -hmm. And it's not even a cancel – like cancel culture is don't do business with this person or don't go to this person's right. shows or do their movies or, you know, cancel culture that's commonly referred to as cancel culture is you make a choice and I'm going to try to influence your choice to be in line with mine. Mm-hmm. So it's people exercising their free will. It's not government trying to ram through poorly thought out right. legislation, right. which is what this is, which is just an abuse of power mm -hmm. at this point. Right. And the people, the worst part is the people that are going to suffer for this aren't Disney. 
Mm -mm. The people that are going to suffer for this are the residents of Florida. Right. Can you imagine getting a 25% increase in your property taxes? We're talking about people that are, to a certain extent, retired people down in Florida who right. are on fixed incomes and can't afford that. Or Disney employees mm. themselves that live in True. those two counties and we know aren't making a boatload of, of money working for Disney. Right. Plus, you have to figure that if this goes through, <clears throat> the services that you depend on when you're down there mm -hmm. now fall to the county. Right. And you made a point about Absolutely. First responders. What was the point that you would make? Yeah. You know, if I'm hoping, obviously, that the first responders would actually be on site all the time. But what if they're not? And you have, you know, we've been to, to Disney when an accident has happened and how quickly a response team comes in. What if now you have to wait a half hour or what if it's busy season and, you know, the nearest ambulance can't get you know, for an hour. Right. Now you're going to have somebody that's possibly going to die on property. And now you have a bigger lawsuit coming at you versus if you let Reedy Creek take care of what they've been doing for the past exactly. 50 something years. So you're years. risking people's lives for a political stunt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the premise for this, and DeSantis has said this numerous times, is we want to make sure that Disney pays their fair share of taxes. Well, it's documented proof mm -hmm. that Disney paid almost a billion dollars in taxes last year, around right. seven, $975 million. Mm -hmm. Disney's not skipping out on taxes. Right. Disney's paying a hell of a lot more taxes than Tesla is or SpaceX mm -hmm. is or the Boring Company or any of Elon Musk's companies. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I don't want to hear the let's make them pay their fair share because mm -hmm. they're paying their taxes. Right, right. And and the other quote that, that totally got me were the different um, Republican uh, congressmen and, and senators and, and whatnot who, you know, basically said, well, Disney's been a guest here. Right, right. You know, OK, I'm sorry. If you've lived someplace for 55 years you're not a guest anymore. Like we've, you know, we've lived in Deptford for 15 years. We're not considered guests right. anymore, you know? Well, and when you're the single largest landowner exactly. for 50 when you, plus years. Right, when you own the majority of the land within the state, your state wouldn't have tourism. Right. W there wouldn't be a universal. There wouldn't be a it sea would be world. Swamp land. It would still be swampland. Now, granted, maybe you know, Six Flags isn't coming in and making you know Florida a great state. Right. You, you know, Disney was the the start of it all. Granted, yes, maybe something would have happened, but if you go back fifty five years, the majority of the people were coming to vacation and they weren't going anywhere in Central Florida. They were going down to Miami. They were going to Key West. They were going to Daytona. Nobody wanted to be in the center of the state. They wanted to be on the coast of the state. Absolutely. So without that mouse, you'd have nothing. And now you're going to do all of this because you're mad that they stood up for themselves? Right. And what's, what's funny is I see Charlie Crist, who's their... Uh, really, it's the, the, the presumptive Democratic opponent down there mm -hmm. for for DeSantis. He probably just has to sit back and go, I like Disney. Well, and he's <laughs> out on Twitter trying to get $7 donations to his campaign. And and, and I, I posted a message to him. I basically said, call up Bob Chappick. Bob Chappick's looking to buy himself a new politician out because the last one that he bought didn't, <laughs> didn't, didn't, go really, so well. didn't really work out for him. Right. There's a great guaranteed fifty thousand dollars. And do you think do you think that Disney's gonna spend just fifty thousand dollars to find someone to replace DeSantis? I have a feeling there might be a little bit more yeah. going into it. Yeah. You know, but the other thing too is not only, you know, the emergency services and, and things like that, but if you look at Disney's infrastructure, it's we were talking about this too. Right. It is amazing that more towns, more cities 
haven't. Well, and the reason they haven't is because Disney Reedy Creek operates at a five to ten million dollar loss. Well, every year. yeah, but and normal government entities don't true. Have a I can understand company picking but, up that tab, right? But I'm sure there are, are ways to like, hey, you don't have to do everything like this, but you could do the. You know, you just look at. You know, because honestly, Disney World is kind of its own Marvel. You know, when you, you you might not realize it when you go there, how much it's a self-contained island all to itself. Absolutely, and 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 what's so fascinating is when you start watching all these behind-the-scenes documentaries, and if if you've never, you know, looked at or, or you know watched or whatever. Do some research and see, you know, between the whole Utilidor thing for the Magic Kingdom right. and the water treatment and everything. And, you know, they recycle, you know, such a high percentage, like, you know, things that every town, every city should be doing. Yes, granted, you know, there there's other stuff to to have that debt, but there's probably other simple things that they could do. You know, you figure the road repair. If there's a pothole one day... Well, there is no road repair because the roads never fail. Right, the because are, they're constantly... They're not patched, they're repaved. Right, right. And and what was really funny was a friend of mine actually shared a, um aerial view where you can see where Osceola, um, Osceola County... And Disney Reedy Creek, and it's uh, uh, like you can see the line yep. in the road. Well, and you can see that when you're down in Disney, oh, and you're driving yeah. around on Disney property, right. it's a postcard everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you drive off, literally a foot past mm -hmm. Disney's border, you can see where the transition mm -hmm. is. You don't need to see signs. Right. You don't need you any, just any, know. Any, as soon as you drive mm -hmm. off Disney property, you know you're off Disney property because now, of what it looks like. Now, granted, a lot has <clears throat> changed in the past 30 years. Because I, and I still remember to the this day, I had taken a vacation with my parents. We were staying on Disney property and we had our own car and we were, and you know, it was one of those things after being on property for so many days, you know what, let's go see the real world. Cause we knew we were, you know, in Disney world and we drove off property. Now, granted again, a lot more of Orlando and, and that the surrounding area has been built up since then, but it was just like, we, as soon as we got off property, we were maybe 10, 15 minutes driving around and we were like, um, yeah, uh, I, I want to go back to the land of make-believe because I don't like this real yeah. world. Mm -hmm. And But that's still the effect. It's more commercialized oh, yeah. down there. Now, right, right. But that commercialization makes it look more run down, makes it right. look dirtier. Right, Makes right. it look almost industrial compared to being right. a and, and that's honestly why Disney <clears throat> did what he did and bought up so much land because he didn't want what happened in California to happen because yeah, as soon as he started, but it's, it's gotten better from the time that we went together versus, you know, 20 years before, because Disney's now started going and buying up more land around it to kind of disney the surrounding area where like back in the well, day and also engaging in partnerships with the other right with the other there, right and, exactly yeah. you know so it's not as much of an eyesore as it was 30 years ago with, with disneyland so that was you know a lot of the point of disney world was let me buy up as much around it so that you know, you, yeah. you don't feel the pressure of that outside world. And that's the thing. You know me. I, I am not a fan of Disney. I will bash Disney for yep. all the faults. Mm -hmm. And they have many faults. Mm -hmm. Bob Chappick being chief among them right now. Mm -hmm. I will bash them for it. But the things that Disney does right, Disney does very right. And mm -hmm. Reedy Creek is one of the things they do very right. Absolutely. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, right now, there's not been any legal challenges, although they are right around the corner. Um, I hope we're not going to have to keep reporting on this every week. Uh, we might give it right. a little bit of time to develop. Right, because, again, it. it's not supposed to go into law until June. Of 2023. Of 2023. So we're talking over a year away. We have his re-election for governor and that's coming the thing. up. It's, so it, even if he gets re-elected, He's going to be there another four years maximum. That's right. it. 
You think Disney's going somewhere? No. No. And what's so funny is you also see in the news all these other states that are like, Disney, you can come here. Yeah, we'll take you. We'll, we'll gladly take you. You know, and, and the other quick little thing that that kind of pissed me off with the whole thing was the fact that this got pushed through so quickly. Yeah. Again, two page document. That said nothing. That said nothing. And there are, are probably a laundry list of other laws that benefit yeah. the people of Florida and not hurt the people of Florida that I'm sure have been sitting on the books for years and maybe even decades. And this is what got well, pushed and through. The thing, the thing to point and, out is Republican governor, mm -hmm. Republican legislature. Right. And so if I Election lived in year. Florida, I would be livid and I would be going to every... You know, I would be supporting every person that is, is up for re-election. It is an election year yeah, this year. Yeah. Get out there. Mm -hmm. Vote your conscience. Yep. Get rid of the people that are that are basically taking their vendetta out on the people mm -hmm. of Florida. Right. Because if this continues to go through and you don't stop it, your taxes are going up 20 to 25%. If you can afford that, more power to you. If right. you can't, you better elect people in there that are going to watch your back. Absolutely. So we'll be right back with some entertainment news. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, Guild Lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. So this just uh, came up yesterday, I believe. So it seems um, that Melissa McBride is now dropping out of the Walking Dead Daryl and Carol spinoff. What the? <laughs> so we've talked previously on the podcast about the myriad of Walking Dead spinoffs that are lined up for the near future. The first of these and the one that everyone was sure we'd get might not be happening. Well, at least not how we thought it would be. What would a Carol and Daryl spinoff be without Carol? <laughs> Melissa McBride has bowed out of the series unexpectedly. The focus of the series will now be just Norman Reedus's character of Daryl Dixon. The series was set to begin uh, was set to be filmed in Europe starting in the summer of 2020 with a 2023 premiere. Uh, the relocation to Europe was something that Melissa wasn't able to do in the time frame required. Angela Kang, the current showrunner of The Walking Dead, is expected to continue to run with the new series. Kang recently said in an interview, uh, there's been talk for a long time about a Daryl Carroll spinoff, and so that was something that we were working on well in advance of the news about the ending of the series. She added, we're going to be off on a different journey, and that show's going to feel hopefully a little tonally fresh. They're just in a different stage of their lives, and it's more of a road show, which I think will be really fun. So in light of this change of plans, does this mean that Carol's fate is sealed in this final season of The Walking Dead? <clears throat> Everyone's been putting their scorecards in order as to who survives the final episodes based on the plethora of spin-offs already planned. Carol and Daryl counted among the chosen ones to survive because of their long talked about spin-offs. If nothing else, it might make the last few episodes more compelling to watch. This news will no doubt come with great disappointment to many fans. While there is no announcement as to the title of the new show, 
I think we can rule out Walking Dead, look at the flowers as an option. <laughs> so what, what are your thoughts? I mean, this just hit. I was kind of surprised at this. Yeah, when I saw the headline pop up, I was kind of like, okay. Well, first off, we know that the current Walking Dead, the original Walking Dead, they have now finished production on that. Right. So that's done. That's in the books. So... I don't think they killed her off. I don't, th unless they're going to go back and reshoot something to, you know, to kill her off. Although, given which, the role that she's been playing in there, she's been painting a target on her back this true, whole time. True, true. You know, I, I, you could, I guess, in you know, in essence, do that. Um, so it, it seems kind of like, well, why not wait? you know, or push it out? Like, does it have to be something that's filmed now? Because the other thing, too, is we really didn't know the time frame of the show. Right. Is this something that happens, like, current time? Is it something that's flashbacks? Um, you know, so we so we really didn't know where the, the time place would be. The other thing is you don't really want to bring in another actor uh, to you play. Can't, you, you can't, not after. Right, exactly. What? 12, 12 years? years right exactly that was that was going to be my other thing it was like all right well are they going to bring in somebody or are they now going to bring in like is he going to find another companion right. and that's going to be well it can't what? be his ex-girlfriend right because she <laughs> <laughs> she kind of took it in the end um yeah so that well, and the other thing that's really strange about this is the filming was set to be in europe right which now, it's not unusual to film on location and that location not be what's right, portrayed. Right, where I mean, you're we really... Had filming for one of the uh, uh, Transformers movies was done at the Bethlehem Steel right, Mill. Right, right. And that was in the movie that was China. Right. So we just saw Batman was shot in Eastern Europe as Gotham City. So it's not that unusual. Gotham City isn't real. I, I, know, I know, but Gotham <laughs> City is Chicago. Or is that Metropolis? I forgot. No, Metropolis is... I was going to say, I thought Metropolis was New York. Metropolis is New York and Chicago is Gotham City. Oh, I never realized That's Chicago was... That's what it was supposed was... to be modeled on. Oh, uh, okay. But, you know, Gotham City was in the United States. Right. I think we can I... canon canonically say that. Right. And I guess if you were doing Europe, maybe you were doing like more countryside. Like, hey, right. they're going across... And the only thing you I can know... think, like everyone knows that Walking Dead owns their movie studio right the property in, georgia. in georgia right so maybe because of all these other spinoffs that property is booked up for shooting those maybe and they needed to shoot somewhere else maybe they're shooting at a location that they couldn't recreate there like i have Could no idea how they're going to recreate new york for the the maggie negan right i'm sure uh, a lot of that's going to be cgi and, right you know so were they supposed to be on some kind of trip you know because because right. Carol does like boats, so, you know, they may have gone to Europe Maybe somehow. they were going to Europe, yeah. Um, Seems like it was going to take a long time to get there, but, yes, you know. But, but then again, you know, but people it, did come from Europe over here, too, <laughs> so it's not like it wasn't possible before, like, electricity and right. gas. But you, so. make a, you make a valid point. Is it something where they just push off production until she can do it? Right. Do you find a new location that's right. working, like... Or, like, does the show make sense? Right. Like, I can't see you completely changing the whole premise of the show because she can't go to Europe to film. Right. That just seems extreme. Right. Right. So. It just, I don't know. It seems kind of like you're almost, and granted, for a lot of people, Daryl is their favorite character. Absolutely. And everybody has said, you better not kill Daryl because as soon as you kill Daryl, I'm I'm done. <laughs> who, who ironically never shows up in the comics. Never shows up. Great. Right. Which is why, you know, like so many people that, you know, read the comics knew Glenn was going to, you know, more than likely was going right. to die because they, you know, there were certain things going on in and the comics. And that's the thing. Like, that's where we're at now where all the people in the comics who get whacked at this point in time aren't in the show anymore. So right. it's about, you know, let's roll the dice. Let's get the Deadpool right. going. Who's, who's going who to who's who's, who's, fill these roles? Right. Exactly. People need to so, die. Who's it going to be? Yeah. So I, I don't know. You know, and. But that's the thing. Maggie would fill that role. Mm -hmm. that Rick would have filled. Right. True. You know, if true. you need that dramatic conclusion, mm -hmm. that's that's one way to get it. Or or does Rick all of a sudden now show up? So instead of doing the Rick movies, because we really haven't heard anything. And then they're going to Rick roll us? 
<laughs> that was good. Look at you. That was a good one. Yeah. So I I don't know. I don't know. Like I don't know how much of the storyline was already written. Were they still in like a storyboard and if phase? They were starting, and if they were going to start shooting this summer, something had to have been written. You had to have right. A good something had of it written. to be ready if they wanted to premiere it next year. Right. So. So I don't know. It's it's, it's going to suck without her. I I think she's a fantastic actress. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. She, her character is because her character plays such a pivotal role. Right. And and her character, she's probably the one character next to to Daryl that you've seen the most character development. Well, and that's the thing is she and Daryl are the only two original from the first episode right. on. So you've seen how Right. Like Maggie's their... character does development, but she does development off screen. Right. And that's the other thing too is a lot of Ma- you know like Maggie didn't come on, you know, for the first couple of seasons, plus you know, she went away for a little while and you know came right. back and and you could definitely see a difference in her from when she was on to when she came back. But with Daryl and and Carol, you really see, you know, Daryl was a punk. You know, you didn't think he was going to last or stay with the group. That's, you know, I ran the one. Yeah. The one slideshow here. So you see the different, you know, evolution. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not playing the slideshow in order. It's randomly. (laughs) Right, right. But there are some of the very early shots here where Norman Reedus is looks like a kid in some of these oh yeah season. you know and, and she kind of you know had a little bit of the um you know because she was the abused housewife right and he was the there yeah you go, here right you know here's the the punk who you know is gonna steal your your lunch money right, right. and you know and really and he turns into the protector and it all kind of happened when her daughter Yep. goes missing and that was kind of like the start of their their bonding really so it, uh, yeah I don't, know. I don't know i would rather see them hold off on the yeah. series like whole and not and and have her when she can do it mm-hmm. rather than not have her in the series itself. yeah yeah so that you know that's just my two cents on it no i'll i'll throw in another two <laughs> cents too all right we got four cents Woo, going four with this cents. one here all right so, all right, that's all we had for our entertainment news. We'll be right back with my insightful <gasps> pick of the wow. week. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. So my pick this week is Halo the Series on Paramount+. Plus. So the official summary is rather dry. They say it, it's in its adaptation for Paramount+. Plus. Halo takes place in a fictional universe that first came to be in 2001 with the launch of Microsoft Xbox's first Halo game. Dramatizing an epic 26th century conflict between humanity and an alien threat known as the Covenant, Halo the series weaves deeply drawn personal stories with action, adventure, and a richly uh, lost my place. Shoot, richly imagined vision of the future. The series features the Master Chief Spartan One One Seven, Doctor Halsey, the brilliant, conflicted, and inscrutable creator of the Spartan Super Soldiers and Cortana, the most advanced AI in human history and potentially the key to the survival of the human race. 
So having experienced all of the Halo video game iterations, as well as consuming most, if not all, of the published novels, I approach the show with a somewhat decidedly established preconception. Most of these preconceptions are realized in the initial episode, much to my thorough enjoyment. Adapting a first-person shooter video game into a successful television series requires a certain creative license, so it's expected that we deviate from the original storyline by a significant degree. In fact, one golden rule of the Halo series has always been the helmet. Master Chief never takes off his helmet. <clears throat> Which early on led you to, to believe that they were robots and stuff mm, like that. Okay. Well, this concept is thrown out in episode one, but it's done in a meaningful and significant storytelling experience. And the visage under the helmet doesn't disappoint. Pablo Schreiber offers the ideal image of an experienced, highly trained, and emotionally reserved super soldier and does not disappoint. While there's some interesting uh, twist with other well-known characters in the series, the talent playing these well-known fictional characters are fantastic. The adrenaline-laced action is on par, if a bit graphic at times, with what you'd expect for one of the best action games in history. Right down to the fact that Master Chief has to duck for cover while his shields recharge, they mimic the sound effects perfectly, so you almost feel like you're in a video mm -hmm. game at that point. <clears throat> Four episodes into the show, and it's had its ups and downs. We start off with episode one, jumping right into the action. We all want it. The pace slows down a bit for some plot development and character development. But then it picks right back up again in episode four, where you feel like you're watching a live action sequence from the latest game in the series. For the most part, the characters are proven to be significantly different than how they're presented in other story forms of the genre. This offers some Con continuity confusion for those who've dipped deep into the lore. But it offers a refreshing take on characters that may have been a little static in the past and given them more depth. The most significant change uh, is that the story is bigger than just Master Chief, even if he's still one of the most significant cogs in the plot machine. It's difficult to judge the... Uh, storytelling when you think you know the direction that the ultimate plot's going and what the big reveal is expected to be, while at the same time hoping it's not exactly as you expect it to be, because thankfully there's enough variety in the characters to offer a glimpse of something you haven't seen yet. Another worthy mention, you know, the show is fantastic, but another worthy mention uh, that probably should have been a pick all its own, is the accompanying after show, Halo the Series Declassified. Each episode features a behind-the-scenes show, uh, behind-the-scenes after show that's a mix of interviews, episode recaps, fan testimonials, and making of documentaries, as well as sneak peeks of next week's episodes. It adds a context to the series and has served as a fantastic companion. Seeing the level of detail that goes into the sets, the training, and even the saying Healy language really gives you a deep appreciation for the show. There's so much going on in the show that it's easy to miss some of the finer details. The after show does a great job of highlighting these scenes and supporting the storytelling. Now, this is one that I had suggested you watch, which um, you've flat out ignored me on at this point. Um, I still think you would enjoy it because it's not, you don't have to be a fan of the video game right. to be a fan of the show. Because the show's not just all shoot 'em up type stuff. There is a certain element of that. Okay. But there's real plot to it. And it's taken some of its plot development from some of the more modern sci fi shows like Mandalorian. Mm hmm. You know, there's a, it's a serial. So week to week, it's a building plot right, line. Right. You have character plot lines, side plots that go on and then you have the overriding plot that is the season's hopefully the season's finale okay um but clearly i i look at the look on your face now and, and i'm not getting any buy-in whatsoever i have so many other things that i watch right and so many other things that you try to get me to watch I've given up on getting you to watch certain things so i just watch them on my own this is one of those ones that if you liked expanse you'll like this Guaranteed. Hey. 
In fact, the bad guy from this was the bad guy from The Expanse, too. Right. Which just helps tie it in even more. Right. Anyway, so that's my pick. Good pick, honey. Yeah, thanks. Right. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. We'll see. Right. We didn't have any afterthoughts this week, right? No, because we were going to do uh, an a update recap, of... but it was a three-week, four-week-old show. So you know, a fan fun. expo. But I I will say, just, you know, because this was kind of our first uh, convention with the new version of um, uh, Wizards. Reality. Oh. <laughs> Wizard World. Wizard. Um, and for the most part, it it seemed to go well. Um, you know, the one thing that was kind of weird, and again, I don't know if this was a, um, you know, post-pandemic thing, was, you know, if you pre-bought your tickets, you, you picked up your badge, but then you had to go to another area to activate your badge. So you had to have a phone that had, you know, a smartphone to do it. So I'm sure if it was something where you didn't have a phone, they probably had some so way of, of doing it. Help the fans at home uh, deal with the uh, lanyard dilemma. Oh, so that was kind of funny. So whenever we've gone to conventions that had... Uh, any sort of uh, badge or, or something. Usually, as soon as you picked up your badge, they had a free lanyard there. So we we pick up our badge. There's no lanyard. We go over to the section where we have to now. And the other thing too was you couldn't scan. That 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 would be something to to think of. So they had a QR code to scan to get to the website, but then you had to manually enter this ten digit alphanumeric. Oh, that sounds painful. Code. And then you had to, like, put your email address in with it. And then if you had a kid, you had to put your kid. So, like, if you, you had a... I think given the fact that you had a companion app for this, it would all work through the right, app. Right. Or there would have been a QR code. Here, scan your badge, dude. Right. You're done. Well, then we're like, all right, well, what do we do with this? And they had a table set up with a person with a cash register selling lanyards and i'm like well i'm not gonna buy a lanyard that i'm never gonna use again and you know unfortunately you hadn't gone it was just maddie and i and i said you know what we'll just put it in our pocket because i'm sure as soon as we get onto the floor we're not gonna have to show it again and that's what we did we put it in our pocket we go up the escalator and that's where the free lanyards were so they were pulling a disney yep. trying to get you to buy five dollar a five dollar lanyard when you so just that's go upstairs. Our, that's our public service <laughs> announcement for this podcast for all of you, all you folks out there who are going to go to other fan expos because they're around the country. Mm-hmm. Just remember, don't buy the damn lanyard. Get the one that's after the lanyard sale. Right. Or most people these days have a lanyard of some sort. Bring it with you, you know, just in case for some reason they, they don't have it right. there for you. So... <laughs> Ah, uh, you know, that's disappointing. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, I think that's all we had today for mm-hmm. the show. Uh, before we do go, I want to bug our listening and viewing audience one more time uh, to subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Entertainment. Video and audio versions can be found listed as Insights into Things, anywhere you can get a podcast. Tune in, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google, etc. I would also invite you to write in, give us your feedback, give us your shows that you'd like us to plug. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find us on Twitter at twitter.com backslash insights underscore things. Uh, You can get high-res versions of all of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insightsintothings. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash insightsintothingspodcast. We do stream five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insightsintothings. You can find us on Instagram at Instagram dot com backslash insights into things or you can find all that and much more on our official website at www.insightsintothings.com and that's it another one in the books all right have a good week everyone bye bye